Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick, and welcome to Russell Westbrook Narrative Night. Um, Westbrook recorded his 99th triple-double last night uh, in their win over the Kings. De'Aaron Fox played pretty well in that matchup as well. Uh, but now he gets the just straight awful Atlanta Hawks, and they're awful <laughs> against the point guard. Um, point guards against the Hawks have been a thing all year. Russell Westbrook essentially came out and said that he wanted to get his 100th triple-double tonight. Now, I'm not sure I'm willing to go with Westbrook tonight. It's Westbrook narrative night because he pretty much essentially came out and gave you the impression that he was guaranteeing he's getting that 100th triple-double. But there is some merit to him not getting it. They play a home game on Friday against the Clippers on national TV. NBA TV, I know they'll get less views because NCAA tournament's going on and whatnot. Um, but it's still a national TV game against the Clippers, another playoff team. He's going to have to play against them. And it would just make more sense. Get it at home. Get it at home um, in front of your crowd. Why get it in front of an Atlanta crowd that probably won't even have the seats full um, on a Tuesday night, a 7.30 game that no one cares about. For some reason, OKC is only minus six in this game. I can't explain that at all, how they're only minus six. Uh, it bodes well for some plays I'm going to talk about on the uh, on the uh, Hawk side, but it is Russell Westbrook narrative night. I'm not sure it's really a narrative you got to roll with, but there is the narrative there. He's going for his 100th triple-double. If he does not get it tonight, I'm definitely going there Friday because he will be getting it on Friday. There is no doubt in my mind. Win, lose, draw, whatever happens on Friday, he is going out there and getting that triple-double because then they go back on the road for two games, I believe. So you would think he would get a triple-double here within the next four games. So he's going to want to get it at home in front of the crowd if he does not get it tonight. But let's hop into this. We'll start off with the point guards and we'll run through these real quick. Um, I'll also talk about whether or not the guys that I like also apply to FanDuel um, or or not. Some of these guys aren't the same position eligibility. Ben Simmons is power forward on FanDuel. But you'll get my gist on exactly how... Um, how, how we're going to go about this. So, because uh, I because I know one of the major complaints people had is that I only focused on the DraftKings site and I didn't talk a whole lot about FanDuel. But generally, my opinion carries over from DraftKings to FanDuel unless the pricing is exaggerated and it's some ridiculous, ridiculous price. But let's hop into this. We'll start off at the top for the point guards, Russell Westbrook. I'm going to try to go through these a little bit quicker than I did before, make these uh, a little bit faster than they were uh, we got the big tournaments out there tonight on both FanDuel and DraftKings. $1 million prize pools, $222 to enter on DraftKings, $250 to enter on FanDuel. Um, I'm not bringing this back as a regular thing for NBA. Uh, just certain nights, uh, probably tonight, maybe tomorrow. Um, it, it all depends on when I have free time, so just check back. Um, they will become, they'll go up kind of randomly, definitely every Tuesday to finish out the NBA season probably. Uh, and then we'll have daily uh, ML, I'll try, at least I'll try to have daily MLB content. Uh, Saturdays are a little hard because the games start at like noon and sometimes I'm not awake till like 11. So it makes it a little hard to record a pod and then get it up, but we will do our best for baseball to get a pod up every day and uh, go over the slate. But let's get into this. Russell Westbrook, top play at, uh, point guard, 11-5 uh, on DraftKings, 12,000 even on FanDuel. I think he's a much better FanDuel play than he is DraftKings. You can easily fit on FanDuel Russell Westbrook and Anthony Davis. Um, leaves you about 5,000 salary remaining, uh, which isn't a whole lot of salary, but uh, there are some value plays on today's slate that you can easily go to. Uh, moving on, Victor Oladipo, fine GPP play, nothing special for me. Same with Bradley Beal. Beal should draw Wiggins defense, which isn't anything special, but it's not bad defense. Um, and at 8,600, there's a lot of mid-range value today, so I don't think it's necessary. Same with Drew Holiday. Um, don't really think he's quite necessary either. He may see Michael Kidd Gilchrist defense. Um because Kid Gilchrist and Batum, Batum can play the four, the forward, the small forward, and cover Etwan Moore. Uh, so, so they may they may opt to put Kid Gilchrist on Holiday. Lou Williams, eighty one hundred against the Bulls. 
Seems about appropriately priced for Lou Williams. Not too much interest there. Uh, ben Simmons, Kemba Walker both fall into that category as well. Seem about appropriately priced, maybe a little overpriced. Ben Simmons about appropriately priced against against Indiana. Um, obviously, he has the 56-point upside, but nothing special. Kyle Lowry, one of my favorite plays against Brooklyn. Um, his minutes have kind of been all over the place with uh, Fred Van Fleet seeing some extra minutes. You can see 28, 33, then we had 41, 23. Uh, and, and like this 20 or this 33 um, wasn't, it was the closer game. We hit the blowout against New York, kind of pseudo blowout, blowout against Atlanta. If, if the game stays anywhere near relatively close, you should see around 33 minutes would be my assumption, uh, which should be enough to pay off the price tag. Not sure I go there, but I do really like Kyle Lowry. Uh, Lonzo Ball against the Nuggets, um, another great play there. Uh, probably staying away from Donovan Mitchell. Um, Alfred Payton, interesting GPP play. Probably not cash viable, but a good matchup against Cleveland. Uh, George Hill, while he's played better defense on Cleveland, still ranks near the bottom in uh, uh, defensive efficiency against uh, the point guard. Uh, moving on, Ricky Rubio. Seems about appropriately priced. He's had some big games, um, but uh, I'm, I mean, it's kind of iffy whether or not you want to play him. Um, he's been decent for value. Um, he needs about, he needs about 40 tonight to burn you. Um, 35 value, that, that's what you want if you play him. 35 plus in cash if you play him. Uh, 40 plus is what starts to burn you. Uh, it's kind of just a matter of do you think, I don't think he's getting 10 rebounds again, especially against Detroit. Um, I just don't think he's going to get that. Um, and then it just depends on how many points he's going to score. You're going to need him to score mid-teens, get some assists. Um, I probably won't go there. You're going to need probably th this game right here, the 12s, 8, and 4, with a few more, with, with, with that probably reaches the double-double or scores some more points. Um, moving on, uh, Chris Dunn, probably a pass at 6,700. I like Dennis Smith Jr. against New York. We have Moody A and Nidal Aquina taking most of the minutes. Trey Burke is dealing with a hand issue. Um, played 14 minutes in the past two games, so I don't think he'll see much Trey Burke. Not that Trey Burke is a great defender. Uh, I really like the next two guys in Dennis Schroeder and Jeff Teague. Schroeder sees a 1.52 fantasy points per minute without Bazemore, Bellinelli, Ilyasova, and is there another guy that you take off? Uh, at least with those three off the court. If you take those three off the court, he averages 1.52 fantasy points per minute, which means at his price tag, he needs to play just roughly around 25, 26 minutes. If he plays 26 minutes, he picks up 39. That exceeds um, 5x value. Uh, if you guys know anything about me, I like to get 6x, but we'll talk in the terms that most people want 5x. I don't really understand the 5x because if you multiply 50,000 by 5, it's 250 points, which isn't winning you many cash games usually. But um, I do really like uh, Dennis Schroeder to get there. Um, I like Jeff Teague as well. 6,600 against Washington. Gets Tomas Sadoransky. Uh, plays decent defense, but uh, Teague has been really good for value. Um, he's not going to kill you. Uh, and he has the upside for like 50, 40, but uh, he's going to find his way to 30-ish points. He started out slow in this game. Oops. Started out slow in this game and this game. Both got to 30 and 33. Um, not the greatest matchup against Washington, but it's better than Utah and Boston, and he did perfectly fine in those matchups. So I'm perfectly fine going back to Jeff Teague. You'll probably find Jeff Teague and Dennis Schroeder in my lineups tonight. Moving on, pretty much skip over these guys. Come down here to D'Angelo Russell. Coming in at 6,200. If this game can stay close, I think D'Angelo Russell gets there. It is a matter of a little bit of volatility if you're going to take D'Angelo Russell. Um, he's kind of been all over the map, but um, you've been seeing more consistently um, the higher minutes if the game can stay close. Blowout. 23, blowout, 28, blowout, or actually close game against the Clippers. That was, is that when the bench got hot? I forget why he only played 20 in that game, but close game, 38, close game, 32. Semi-close, I think, against Chicago. I think it was, it was close-ish for Chicago, I think. Um, 
it, it was a little bit closer than the 17 point score tends you to believe but 29 32 against charlotte in a closer game 29 against indy in a closer game if he gets 30 minutes i think he he's a fantasy point pre He's over a fantasy point per minute producer, so I really like D'Angelo Russell tonight. Um, I'll have to wrestle with that and think about that. Um, it's not the greatest matchup against Kyle Lowry, but Kyle Lowry has been kind of seeing reduced minutes at times. So if he does get Fred Van Fleet for an extended period of times, that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, the spread is nine for the Raptors, which I think they leave Russell on if it's if it's around that score. So. Uh, I do like D'Angelo Russell. Uh, Austin Rivers, the poor man's Lou Williams. I do like him tonight way more than Lou Williams. You know, obviously needs to score less to get there. So I do like Austin Rivers tonight. Do like DeJounte Murray for the bounce back, but probably don't go there. Um, Dinwiddie, kind of the poor man's D'Angelo Russell. Uh, and he's been quietly very consistent for value. 27, 24, 27, 20, 32, 26, 31, 26, 32. 27, like in his, what is this, show you like their last 12, I think, um, would not have missed value in any of them. Now, I probably play him tonight. I probably put him in my lineups and he won't hit value. I mean, that's that's usually how these things go for me. I'll put him in my lineup, won't get value because I played him. Um, and this game right here was a game that he fouled out in 23 minutes against Charlotte. So keep that in mind. He would have gotten to the double-double, probably posted over 30 so I do really like Spencer Dinwiddie tonight at 5,500. Should be low owned in cash games, um, extremely low. Uh, the, the Brooklyn guys are actually pretty interesting tonight if they can keep close. Same with Karis LeVert. Jordan Clarkson should be interesting. If people game log watch um, too much with this, they'll see nine points against the Lakers. But um, Ty Lu threw in the towel about six and a half to go in the fourth quarter against the Lakers. I believe Clarkson did not see any more run, only saw 16 minutes. Love Jordan Clarkson tonight. Um, I like him a lot more on FanDuel, where um, Price is kind of a little more lenient over there, uh, and he's only 4600 Pretty much a lock for my cash games on FanDuel. Love Jordan Clarkson there. Uh, Milos Teodosic is fine. Does it provide a whole lot of upside? I like Trey Burke on FanDuel. Uh, he comes in at 4200 um, has not hit value in the last two games, um, but he only played 14 minutes apiece in those. If he gets back up into the 20s, I think he'll hit value, even with the wrist issue. So I do I do like Trey Burke on FanDuel. Um, other guys, dumpster diving down here. You can take a shot on the Atlanta guards, um, Dorsey, Maggett, or Magid, or however you say it. I think it's Maggett, or whatever. Um, and... Uh, uh, Isaiah Taylor probably won't go there tonight. You can also taste a shot on campaign. Frank Nitalakina is very interesting to me. Um, he hasn't been doing anything with his minutes, but 32, 33, 28, and then 23, 20, and then there's 28, 24, 30. Hasn't been like a crushing value or anything, but seems like a relatively okay, reasonable play for 3,600 if you need it. Not going to win you the slate, but not going to lose it for you. Um, Dwight Bikes, I believe, has actually been ruled out. Yeah, he's been ruled out today against the Jazz, so Dwight Bikes is out, along with Reggie Bullock, is doubtful, uh, which opens up some other guys on the, uh, the, the, the Pistons that we'll talk about. Kyle Collinsworth is interesting, maybe a GPP flyer, but not gonna go there. Moving on to shooting guard. Uh, well, there's some overlapping plays. Devin Booker, interesting GPP if you want to run him back against LeBron. If that game stays close, Booker should crush. If it doesn't stay close, Booker probably doesn't crush. Ignore the questionable tag. Uh, the coach of the Suns said that Booker, Warren, and Jackson are good to go. Um, DeMar DeRozan, interesting at 7,700. Has the upside for tournaments that you want with 56. Also has relatively safety in cash, if you want to call it safety. It's not really safety. Uh, but he has a, he has a relatively nice floor for cash. Uh, moving on, Wiggins a little bit too overpriced for me on DraftKings. Barton and Harris are, are interesting, but probably not worth it. Uh, Harris will get Contavious Caldwell Pope. Contavious Caldwell Pope will get Will Barton, or will get Gary Harris, so kind of cancel each other out. Um, KCP comes in at 6,100, so he's interesting over here, uh, but not necessary in my opinion. We have Torian Prince, 
who averages 1.36 fantasy points per minute without those guys out. Uh, if he sees 30 minutes, he should hit value. Uh, it's just a matter of if they can keep it close. Oklahoma City tends to play down to competition, so you'll probably find Torian Prince in my cash game lineup along with Dennis Schroeder, which is why I partially want to run it back with uh, Russell Westbrook over Anthony Davis, but I'll probably end up going brow because it's Anthony Davis. Uh, moving on, we have Jonathan Simmons. Aaron Gordon has been ruled out tonight, I believe. See, is there anybody else out for Orlando? Hold on. Oh, oh yeah, Fournier is still out for Orlando um, against the Spurs. So we have the Orlando value again. It's not really value anymore. Let's be honest, it's not really value. But Jonathan Simmons is still technically value. Um, he is an extremely high fantasy point per minute producer. He's taking uh, a high amount of shots, converting at a high rate. So that's the only concern I really have is that he's converting um, he's converting his shots at an extremely high rate, um, which is not sustainable. But I, I don't think that like 35, 39 is highly out of the question. Um, he's going to have to get 30, 35 minutes. Um, they've kept these games close against Sacramento and Clippers, which allowed him to get those minutes. Um, it's kind of a question is, do you think they're going to keep it close on whether you go ahead and play him or not? Uh, other shooting guards... Um, we already went over most of these guys. Trey Burks there again. Like I said, love him on FanDuel more than DraftKings. Uh, we have James Ennis at the third. Um, 4,300 uh, goes up against Utah. Should see extended minutes into the 30s. Um, probably well into the 30s because of no Dwight Bikes and no uh, Reggie Bullock. Dwight Bikes probably just sucks uh, other guys up to play point guard, which opens up extra minutes for James Ennis. Uh, another beneficiary of that is Stanley Johnson. It looks like Stanley Johnson should play, should probably draw the st I Actually, I would bet Luke Kennard draws the start uh, and Stanley Johnson's first game back. We'll have to see about a minute's limit on that. Check out Rob Beard on Twitter, uh, R-O-B-B-E-A-R-D. Um, one of the guys real helpful for fantasy players. Um, Avery Bradley is questionable. Have to keep an eye on that. Corey Brewer has quietly been crushing. Uh, I have a lot of interest in him tonight. Needs about 20 um, since getting inserted in the starting lineup. Has reached 20 in all three of the games, so I do think I will probably give Corey Brewer a look. Uh, he's taking high percentage shots. Um, he has been knocking down the threes, but I think even without knocking down, like this game, he didn't knock down the threes and he still crushed. Uh, so I think Corey Brewer, an interesting look, playing high minutes. Uh, and Terrence Ferguson was cleared to play last night, and Corey Brewer still saw 33 minutes. So I think he's a very interesting play at 3,900. Jamal Crawford at 39, also very interesting as well. Campaign, um, interesting. There's Luke Kennard at 3,600. Um, interesting value play should see around 30 plus minutes. Uh, and if he's able to get 20 points again, should, will exceed value at that price. Moving on to the small forward. We start at the top with LeBron James, 11, six, probably my third favorite sprint of the night. It's probably Brow, Westbrook, then LeBron, um, LeBron's a much more viable spend on FanDuel than I think he is on DraftKings. He's 12-5 on FanDuel, but uh, he always tends to be... The, the, the small forward position tends to be a little weaker on FanDuel. Um, Paul George, no interest. Tobias, I have some interest, but he's a little... He just seems overpriced, but uh, can easily hit GPP value at that price. Kyle Kuzma remains 6,400. Uh, provides an interesting floor for cash, but uh, not a whole lot of GPP winning upside. He's got to get this like 2010 game to really have GPP winning upside, but he's playing a crazy amount of minutes without Ingram and without Josh Hart. Uh, should have to play minutes again against Denver here. Did perfectly fine against Millsap. Uh, was his worst game against Millsap, so um, do keep that in mind, but I do like him as an option tonight. Um, other small forwards that I like, I like Otto Porter's price down to 6,400, had one bad game really, uh, the rest obviously meeting or exceeding value, so he's an interesting play, um, against Minnesota, should draw the defense of Bielitsa or Taj, uh, so I do have some interest in some Otto Porter, 
Price is a lot higher on FanDuel at 74. Not sure I like him there, but at 64 on DraftKings, definitely a viable price. Uh, Nemanja Bialica, love Bialica um, against Washington. Uh, like him a lot more if he gets the small, if he plays the three, which I think he'll play a chunk of three. I don't think t Taj is rangy and athletic. I think he can guard Otto, so I don't think uh, he'll get run off. Uh, so I do like the idea of playing Bielitsa tonight. He's playing 40 minutes a night uh, in what should be a competitive game against Washington. Um, other than that, don't like much of the mid-tier here. We got Mario Hazonia again if you want to go there. Um, he, he hasn't been crushing in, with Gordon out, so I, I, I'm not taking that risk that he gets me like 18. Not on this late. Uh, coming all the way down here, nothing really down here. Bertans, maybe. Uh, but other than that, not a whole lot at the small forward. Moving on to power forward, uh, I believe LaMarcus Aldridge is in tonight. He's going to give it a go, uh, so no real value there. I don't think I play LaMarcus Aldridge just simply because it was an actual injury. It wasn't just rest that kept him out, so I I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably not go and invest in LaMarcus Aldridge. Anthony Davis is 11-2 making him the cheapest star on the slate so uh, on DraftKings. So I'm going to play Anthony Davis, a man who got a triple-double with blocks. I, look, I didn't even know he got it with blocks. I didn't play um, that slate when he played against Utah. I just saw the triple-double, and I was like, oh, hey, how, did, how the heck did Anthony Davis get to 10 assists? And then I checked it again. I was like, oh, my God, he got 10 blocks. That's how he got his triple-double, so he also had three steals. This dude got 26 DraftKings points and 39 FanDuel points off of blocks and steals. I mean, come on, man. And you've got to assume Charlotte's going to present him blocks, and good luck, Marvin Williams. Good good luck stopping Anthony Davis. And then when they put in Frank the Tank, yeah, good luck, good luck Franklin, stopping Anthony Davis. I, I mean... They're going to have to use Dwight on him, I would think. I mean, and then uh, I'll have an intriguing play, I guess, at, at, at small f or at center. Um, love Anthony Davis. He's 12-9 on FanDuel. You can probably get away with not playing him on FanDuel. But with the blocks and steals being the way they're scored on FanDuel, you might want to play him over there as well. Um... No real interest in most of these guys. Julius Randle, GPP interest, but nothing more than that. He's much more viable on FanDuel, where he's only $100 more uh, than his price is on DraftKings. Uh, I always like to look at that and see the price discrepancies between the sites, uh, where you have more, where salary can be a little more inflated on FanDuel when prices are lower or extremely close to the DraftKings price. I like to take advantage of that. Uh, one of my favorite plays of the night on DraftKings is Larry Nance, 7K. Um, he's 78 on FanDuel, a little bit tougher to pay, but I still think you can go there. Um, I expect him to get back to this 40-ish points, which would crush the, the 35 points that you want at 5x value. Even if he only gets this, doesn't get any steals or, or blocks, um, and ends up with like a 36. I, I, I think it's still a really good game from Larry Nance. I think he p picks up the double-double. He was on pace to see 32 minutes against the Lakers, and just, like I said, they got shut down midway through the fourth, or not, yeah, midway through the fourth. And Bobby Portis is interesting, but I don't like the shadow rotation too much. Paul Millsap is trending up towards 30 minutes uh, a night. Um, played 24 in the blowout against Sacramento. Um, but all the starters were limited in that. Um, there is a little bit of concern that they kind of take it easy with him tonight. Um, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure they will, but the, it is a minor concern I have, so I probably won't go there in cash games, but Paul Millsap, an interesting play, could see around 32 minutes tonight. Now going back to the POW train, that was a nightmare last night, an absolute, absolute nightmare. Um... It's a really good spot for Miritich, but I, just, uh, I don't want to play Nico. He's been so bad. Uh, Dwight Powell, interesting. Um, he's been not crushing, but he's been doing fairly well um, at the price tag, uh, meeting value. Uh, Rodney Hollis Jefferson, interesting. The whole entire Brooklyn team is interesting because they've kind of narrowed down the, uh, the rotation, so very interesting there. 
Uh, I think that's about it. Jay Crowder, a little bit interesting at 4,400. Sees into the 30 minutes on regular occasions. Uh, Jeff Green, interesting. We've got Rodney Hood and C.D. Osmond out, so it should be Jeff Green time again. Rodney Hood did get upgraded to questionable. He was doubtful. Uh, then he got upgraded to probable and then now he's back to questionable is what i saw come across my timeline so <laughs> if if rodney hood plays i probably get off of jeff green but if rodney hood is out i do like me some jeff green so moving on to center we'll start down here at the bottom because there's only a couple bottom plays i like i like him at okafor in the one game where he played a true big um against the clippers and deandre jordan he played 21 minutes he played 18 against rudy gobert uh, 17 against Willie Cauley Stein, uh, in Costa Cufas. I think that was Costa, was that Costa, I think that was Costa Cufas night. Four against San Antonio, um, 19 against Phoenix, where I believe Tyson Chandler played. 18 against Whiteside. You should see an elevated amount of minutes, so he can definitely get to that 24, five points and crush value. So he's an interesting play. If I knew exactly what Dallas was going to do with Nerlens Noel, um, I'd have a lot of interest in him. If he's going to play this 26 minutes, I'd be all over it, but I don't really know how many minutes Nerlens Noel is going to play. Uh, not a whole lot of centers that I like, as you can see. Uh, kind of just scrolling up. Do kind of like Miles Turner tonight, but not in love. Uh, Adams is questionable. Um, the Thunder think he will give it a go tonight. But he is questionable, so keep that in mind. Uh, DeAndre Jordan should smash the Bulls' uh, 20 rebounds. It's just a question if he can get there with his points. Or if Harrell gets hot, if he gets set. Uh, Rudy Gobert, interesting at his price. Probably don't go there. Vooch has been the uh, the Spurs killer. He averages like 46 DraftKings points against the Spurs. Uh, so an interesting play there. Dwight against the Pelicans. Not a huge fan of Dwight, but... I could see him getting 2020. Same with Drummond. Drummond put up 80 something in their first meeting against Utah, even though it was without Blake. That doesn't really matter to me. But uh, I think Drummond and Howard, uh, I, I like them. And then I like, I, I don't like Joker. Um, I, I think if Jokic plays really well to get to the 60 points, I think they blow the Lakers out. So consequently, I don't necessarily know how much value there is because i think they toast the lakers if he gets the value so that's my opinion on that um to get the value he toasts the lakers and then they they'll take him out um so Embiid, no pass towns i like towns 9400 gets some combination of mike scott marcin gortat and if they put markeith morris at the center good luck so I do like Carl Anthony Towns tonight. Not sure I'll be able to get there, but I uh, do really like Towns. But guys, that's going to do it for this uh, breakdown of today's NBA DFS slate. Hope I gave a little bit of insight. If I didn't mention site specific, I like them on both sites regardless of price. Um, and then obviously I mentioned a couple FanDuel only plays and then some plays I preferred on FanDuel more than DraftKings. Uh, and some plays I have preferred on DraftKings more than FanDuel. But guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I uh, hope you guys win some money tonight. Peace out.